Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Starting in the first verse of John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered. I love the way Jesus answers stuff. He answers the in-between question instead of the, the question that was given or the statement that was made. He'll just kind of cut through all the junk and kind of go, yeah. Gee, remember, remember the fig tree? <laughs> he answered the fig tree. The fig tree just stood up there, just had leaves and no figs. It was lying. He just walked up to it and said, no man, eat fruit. He, and the Bible says he answered it. <laughs> he answered the fig tree. Fig tree says, I got figs, but it really didn't. He said, okay, you won't, no man will eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And it died. Hallelujah. Jesus answered Nicodemus and said unto him, so he had a question, and he knew the real, the real question he was coming for. We know you come from God. Now, well, you've taught some strange stuff around here. You've been teaching stuff that people aren't happy about. You got the Pharisees and the Sadducees, a whole bunch of just mad, ready to take you out. And uh, but you're doing miracles. Only a man that come from God can do these miracles. And Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily. Now, verily is the old Elizabethan for a solemn oath. I swear. You know, you know I know. No one's sure I have an earth. Yeah, I understand what I'm talking about. It's, it's, a, it's a solemn oath. It's, it, this, is, this is the way it is. And there's no shifting to it. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born, I'm sorry, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb and, uh, the second time and be born? And all the women said, dear God, I hope not. Amen. Amen. I mean, you thought that, you thought that little eight-pounder was something else. Woo! Come on. Verily, verily, Jesus answered, said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee that ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and hearest the sound thereof, but thou cannot tell Canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Boy, you see, you get, you, you, if you're not careful, your mind will get in the way of hearing from heaven. And Jesus answered, and the third time he's answered him, and said unto him, Art thou a master or a teacher of Israel and knowest not these things? Oh, my. And we'll just stop right there. Now, there's a, there's a few things here. First of all, when we look at this, it says, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You might have, must have a second birth. So what is the, what is the second birth? What is the uh, being born again, born, being born anew? Many times in the church, we, we've got all kinds of different phrases. And the Bible uses a lot of different phrases. Be born again, you must be saved. Give your heart to Jesus you know, um, you know, commit your life to the Lord. But we're all talking about the same thing, and that is what Jesus is talking about right here, the new birth, what it means to be born again. Amen? Amen? Now, when we look in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost says, Repent and be baptized, every one in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you'll be, you and your house will be saved. I believe, well, let, me, let me make sure I don't misquote that one, because that's important we don't misquote something. Can you say amen to that? Have you ever misquoted the scripture for a long time and then went and read it in the Bible and went, oh my God, I've been saying it wrong. Well, that's why you need to go to the Bible, isn't it? Because if you say it wrong, you're not getting it right. If you're not getting it right, you're not going to get the right answer. I'm sorry, I did not quote that right. Then Peter said, because he, I, was, I was quoting the one for the Ephesian jailer. Uh, Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. And so we have Jesus here telling Nicodemus that he's a teacher. 
He's a, he's a Pharisee. He's a, master, he's a master. He's a teacher in the, in the Jewish culture. And Jesus says, except the man be born again or born anew or born from above. Different translations say it in different ways. He shall not. Everybody say, shall not. Shall. See the kingdom of heaven. You got to be born again or enter into the kingdom of heaven. You cannot enter into the kingdom unless you're born again. Acts 2.38, Peter preached and said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins, that you, that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so we're, we're, we're coming to a place in the church that we must understand what the new birth is, what it's about, how it's accomplished. And let me just tell you, coming in and staying like you are ain't the new birth. It's not the same thing. <clears throat> Joining the church, shaking the preacher's hand, writing your name in the roll book, even being baptized if you've not been repented, if you've not received the new birth, don't save you. We're, we're, we're trying to convince people that they're saved that aren't. Amen. I remember a number of years ago, we had just come to Greensboro, and, we, and, and uh, the church was in a different location at that time. And one of the guys was in the church, and, and he had witnessed to somebody at work and got them saved and brought them to church. Well, just for you know, reference sake, is, you know, on this side of the platform after the service, I, I'm over here, and he's talking to this girl that he brought and supposedly got saved. And she's crying and all stuff. And I went over and kind of listened for a second. He's over there telling her she did get saved. Well, let me tell you something. You can do damage when you try to make people think they're somewhere they're not. And so I kind of listened for a second. I finally just butted in. You're doing this in my church. I'm the pastor. I'm the overseer. You're trying to commit. And he's just going on and on and on. I, finally, I, said, I said, sweetheart, look, let me ask you a question. Did you pray that prayer with him the other day at work? Yes, I did. Did you mean it? No, I was just getting, I was just saying so he would leave me alone. Yeah. She just wanted to get him off her case, so she did what he, whatever he was just to get him to shut up. I said, well, honey, you're not saved. You're not born again. But that's okay. When you want to give your heart to Jesus and you're ready to give your heart to Jesus, you know what to do. You can do that. He got so mad with me. But, you know, he was half my size, so he, said, he didn't say anything. You know, I mean, he just, I mean, he got furious with me. And I just, I just put, I just put off. I said, "Look, if you didn't mean it, then you're not saved, because you have to pray. You have to believe in your heart and say it with your mouth. Saying it with your mouth without the believing in your heart isn't good enough." I remember one time somebody came in and said they went down to the juvenile detention center and all the young people come up front, had them stand there, and said, "Everybody that wants to reject Jesus Christ and go to hell, take a step backwards." They came, and told me they got everybody saved. He didn't get a one of them saved. The Bible doesn't say he who does not reject Jesus Christ and doesn't want to go to hell is saved. Hello. See, we, we, we get cute with stuff. We're trying to convince, we're trying to look for numbers to, uh, to justify or validate our ministries and our lives instead of doing what the Bible says to do. Now, Jesus looked at Nicodemus and said, except the man, he's a teacher. Except the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then Nicodemus didn't get it. He couldn't figure out there's a spiritual birth and a natural birth. And Jesus said, man, are you a teacher? You, don't, you ain't got this figured out. In other words, the blind's leading the blind. They're all going to fall in the ditch. Amen. Our church is now about uh, the, the, the new term. Acceptance and affirmation. Acceptance and affirmation. God accepts no man's person. God's not interested in what you have done or haven't done. He's interested in the submission of your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, repenting. That means, you know, and the word repentance has, you know, I know the, the real generic bottom line definition is a change of mind. Uh, but really, uh, it carries a deeper meaning than that, a change of mind, an attitude, and purpose as to reflect a change of heart. See, it's deeper than just you change your mind. Changing your mind's like, I want to go to Wendy's. No, nope, I'm going to Burger King instead. That's not repentance. Okay? When you change your mind, when you change your attitude, when you change your purpose, you do that in order to be, uh, to, to line up with something different. When you change your purpose, okay, if your lifelong purpose is to go get drunk, and, and, and to be, uh, you know, to, to, to see how many encounters with people you can have, uh, that's, and, and then you get saved, you no longer have that as your purpose. You want to serve the Lord. 
okay? And so some people say, well, you just change your mind. Repenting is just changing your mind. It's, it's, that's the, you're just being shallow. You didn't study any. You didn't go a little bit deeper. You didn't take a little extra time to get a little bit deeper than just changing your mind. Why is this? Because I know this. The Bible says that, 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 that repent, godly sorrow worketh repentance. So if, you're, if you have, a, you know, some, some people say we shouldn't be sorry. We shouldn't ever be, you know, down. We shouldn't ever feel bad that we sin. Well, the Bible says godly sorrow works, puts repentance to work. Amen. We're, we're, we don't need to be uh, accepting and affirming people who are living in sin. In all honesty, that's not what the Bible teaches us to do. I read, read recently some guy, he's, he's, he's got a lot of, uh, he was on the, uh, one of the, uh, well, he was on a newscast from one of the most liberal media people in the country or in the world. And uh, they were interviewing him about his church because, you know, it's about the subject of homosexuality and all this kind of stuff. And, um, he, and, and, you know, and he doesn't take a public stand on homosexuality. And if he has homosexual couples in his church and they come to him and ask him, um, what do you think about our lifestyle? He tells them, God, I'm, the I'm not the judge. God is. They want to accept and affirm people and their gifts. Folks, Jesus did not say, go ye into all the world and tell everybody they're accepted and affirmed. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And here's what he said. Say, he said, go tell them, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Are you here? No acceptance and affirmation in that statement. Repent. You have a complete turnaround in your life. You're no longer serving the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the lust of the um, mind. Are you here? I was trying to say, less of the flesh, less of the eyes, and the pride of life. There you go. Third one, pride of life. You're no longer serving those things. You come to serve God. You come to do his will. Some people say, well, God loves people. God loves people just like they are. Yeah, that's why I sent Jesus, so they can have godly sorrow and repent and be born again. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. The rich young ruler came to Jesus one day and asked him and said, um, what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, well, what, what do you, what do you uh, know? How do you read the law? He said, well, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, thou is well, well said, um, but you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. All right? But I want to, you know, how many people have heard people excuse everything in the world under the guise of Jesus just loved people? Hello? And one of the big mantras right now is because Jesus didn't address homosexuality, then it's okay. Well, he didn't address pedophilia either. And he didn't address rape. And he didn't address incest. And he didn't address bestiality. And he didn't, come on now. He didn't address any of those things. Why? Because he came not to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. Think not that I came to do away with the law. I've come to fulfill feel the law. I've come to empower you to live the moral and social and godly code of the law by the power that I put into you when you get born again. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right. So getting born again doesn't mean you get to keep doing what you were doing. Amen. Jesus said they repent. He told the disciples, go out and tell them repent. Come on now. Uh, Acts 2, 38, when the church was started, repent and be baptized. Glory to God. Amen. It's all through the Bible. To see, when you get born again, we confess the lordship of Jesus. We come into a place of repentance. We change our purpose by giving our life to him. G the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 8, 9, 10, you know, it says through there, it says that if we will confess Jesus as Lord, or confess the Lord Jesus, that's King James. Other translations actually say confess Jesus, that Jesus is Lord. Now, so let's stop there before we get to the uh, believing in your heart that God's raised us from the dead. Confess his lordship. See, there is repentance there. You are acknowledging, you are changing allegiance to whom you obey. The saved person, the sinner who comes to Jesus Christ, those outside the covenant, and when they come and they confess Jesus as Lord, the repentance, the change of heart, purpose and attitude is, I no longer serve the master of sin, Satan. I'll now serve the master of heaven, Jesus. 
I have, I, now, what does that mean? Whatever Jesus says, do you do? What God's word says, you do. God, God he says, I am the Lord, I, the Lord said, I am the Lord, I change not. The Bible says of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you come into the kingdom of God, you're born again. When you confess him as Lord, that means you submit your whole life to him. Amen. And another thing, I think I said this recently, the ministry of Jesus was not a New Testament ministry. Why? Because he said in his ministry he was sent solely for the lost sheep of the lost, lost uh, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The New Testament church did not start until somebody got born again after Jesus was raised from the dead. Up and until that time, his ministry was an Old Testament ministry for running the church. So let me say this: if Jesus didn't address it, you've got to take into account that Jesus was talking to people who knew the law. He wasn't talking to a Gentile people. He wasn't talking to people outside the covenant. So if he didn't address certain things, he didn't address them because they already knew they were wrong. Because they're under the law. They knew what the law said. About 13 years old, they could quote so much it wasn't even funny. So he didn't have to readdress stuff. Now, what he did do a lot of times was he would address stuff and change it. And he could do that as the head of the church. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, see, he's going to establish the law of love. But, and notice where he, he dealt with a lot of his stuff. He didn't do a lot, a lot of dealing with personal sin. He dealt with things that sinned against others. Not always, but a lot, a lot of his things he said. You, you heard an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do good to them that spitefully use you. Bless them that persecute you. Amen. Don't render evil for evil. Right. Or how about this one? I look, you know, sexual sins. Somehow, somehow I know people kind of think sexual sins are, you know, we're, 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 we're entering into that spirit that was in Nazi Germany. That spirit's in America. There was a lot of homosexuality, a lot of, a lot of stuff in that, in, in that whole fascist whatever. But um, Jesus, because some people say, you know, God just said love people. And, you know, and, oh, Really? Did you know that when, when the, um, uh, Jesus said something, he said, you, you've heard it said that, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery? But I say. Lord, notice how he lowers the bar here. He didn't lower the bar, he made it higher. He said, that you've heard it said that thou shalt not commit adultery? I say, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you've done it already in your heart. He raised the bar. Why? Because of the new birth. Because a man is now submitted to his lordship. Because the Holy Ghost indwells him. He's empowered to live out God's moral code and God's law in the flesh. He's empowered to do it and to do it right. Glory to God. <clears throat> so it wasn't just a matter of making yourself not do wrong. The attitude of your heart should be, I'm not going to do wrong. And the attitude is, I'm not, I'm not going to look at that woman to think that way about it. Not that, well, I'm thinking about it, I want to, but I'm just going to make sure I don't do it. Right. Jesus said, if you think about it, you've done it. Now, that's not lowering the bar. Are you here? That made it tougher. And so the new birth is an imperative. It's, it's, the, it's the central crux of the entire New Testament doctrine. You can't, if you don't get the new birth, you don't get anything. Amen. Nothing written to the church, nothing any said anywhere. If you don't get the new birth, you don't get anything. You must be born again. You must let the life of God that now void in your spirit come into your spirit. You're born of God. Now you once again, oh man, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, if, uh, I mean 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. What's that mean? Well, we know how the old creature acted. <laughs> the scriptures that bear this out. He was governed and dictated by the, the desires and the lust of his flesh. Flesh driven. What went in the history of our country, of a good solid Christian country, now not a heathen country, but in our country, do we define our existence by the method in which we have sex? We have going on, I'm a homosexual. We, we now say you have sexual orientation. Your behavior now defines who you are. It's 
It's the devil. What is all that? That is making people more carnal and more fleshly, giving to more fleshly. And if you go back and read the Bible, when Moses came down on the mountain, they were living in, they were, they, that whole thing, they were in sexual want. It was, just a, it was a big orgy, just to say it like it was. They were, they were just out there in just absolute sexual wantonness and perverseness and everything else going on when Moses came down out of the mount. And who will be with God? They wanted to serve the idol because they had so given themselves to the flesh. That's why we're to be born again and live out of our spirit. Not just come to church and, you know, and, and kind of uh, resolve some type of what's going to happen to me in the afterlife. What's going on in your life here is going to hinder you going into the afterlife if you don't get it right. So when we get born again, don't get upset with me. Folks, listen, you think your kids ain't heard some of this stuff? They've heard stuff way beyond what I said this morning. And seen it. That's right. I mean, there's all kinds of, you think, you think there's shelter in school? Well, just let me tell you. Ain't no way. Now, maybe 25 years ago, we, could, we may have been a little more careful. But now, they're, they're way down the road from what I've said. They've been exposed to all kinds of stuff. Even if they don't want to be, they're exposed to it. And our school systems are all for it. I mean, the new Common, common Core curriculum is, is, is almost pornography for the fourth graders. It's not even almost, it is. That's why people kick, schools are kicking it out as fast as they can because they find out what the government's trying to shove down their throat. There's a purpose, there's a purpose behind the, the demonized, socialistic-minded, radical nutcases in our country. And they want to use the school system to, to indoctrinate your children with garbage. So they better hear some good stuff at church to find out what the Bible says. Amen. There's an agenda, and it's run by the devil himself to destroy your children. He hates the children, and God loves them. Hallelujah. Now, where was it before I got there? Oh, Moses came down out of the mount. Thank you, Janice. Moses came down out of the mount. They're having this great big sex feast down there, and he goes, who will? I mean, his face is glowing. Had to cover it up with a veil. They couldn't even look at it. Who will serve the Lord? I mean, I tried to do by Moses' imitation. Who will serve the Lord God Almighty? Still can't do a Charlton Heston. Anyway, you know, and you know, and certain ones run over the, 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 the priesthood, the Levites did. A lot, but th I forgot how many thousands didn't. Or swallowed up. See, so people, oh, God just loves people like they are. Let, he, he accepts and affirms them. Hogwash and garbage. He says, repent. He says to be different. He says, come and, you know, come unto me, all you labor and the heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. What? What? Rest from uh, trying to do it in the flesh. And if you'll get born again, if you'll accept Jesus, you'll have a change of mind. You'll have a change of purpose. You'll have a change of attitude. You'll, you'll be totally different. Glory to God. And now you can live out of the power inside and overcome all the stuff the devil's trying to get you to do. And if you're a pastor and you're telling homosexuals they can stay in your church and be, and be saved and go to heaven, you're going to burn in hell as, as Ichabod because the Spirit of God's departed from you. Nobody's got the guts to say stuff anymore because they lose people. Everybody wants to run over to the affirming church. You know, we love gays. Listen, we love people. We want every un person that's not born again to be saved. And we should stop limiting it to a, social, to a group of behavioral, behavioral issues. Why don't we just go around and say we love murderers? How about this one? Let's go out on the street corner and say we love pedophiles. Now the same bunch that's on your case for not loving gays will be all over your case for loving pedophiles. Come on now. We love the bestiality. Now see, God didn't say go in the world and preach to a certain group. He said go into all the world and tell every creature that the kingdom of heavens and repent for the kingdom of heavens at hand. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. What's the gospel? you got to change, but i got news for you. There's one who empowers you to change, and it's, his name is Jesus Christ. And if you'll make him Lord of your life, he'll empower you to overcome all sin, glory to God, and go to heaven, praise God. But no, we get cute. We bring them into our church. One guy said, I, want to, I always want to have homosexuals in my church. Paul didn't. 
He just had one guy living with his stepmama and booted him out, turned him over to the devil to destroy his flesh. Why? So that his spirit would be saved in the day of the Lord. That was just, that was just shacking up with mama-in-law. Janice said, nasty. Brown, that's just nasty. I mean, on the, on the totem pole of sexual perversion, that's, that, that's not way, way out there. That's out there. It's not way, way out there. But Paul came in said, you're just letting them do it in your church. Now, we got pastors saying we want those people in our churches. No. You're to go get them saved and then bring them into the church and disciple people. Whether they're homosexual, whether they're straight, whether they're, you know, black, whether they're white, whether they're Asian, whether they're living in pro prostitution, whether they're a pimp, whether they're a drug addict or a drug dealer. We don't need to be separating everybody in the classes of the kind of people we want to come in because so it's, it's politically correct and politically acceptable and we don't, we don't make anybody feel bad. We want to affirm their being. No, you're not. Listen, let me tell you something. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. You cannot come to God clothed the way you are. You must repent and be born again and put on the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Then you're accepted and affirmed before the Father. We need to tell, stop telling people when they're lost in sin and they're on the way to hell and they're going to be in devil's hell forever that God accepts and affirms them as they are. You're selling them a lie and damning their soul to hell. And woe be to anyone who would make one of these stumble and fall. Are you here? You're going home. We have a message, and our message is being muffled because of the cute, because of the media. The media sucks up this stuff. They go and promote all these churches who just and make it sound oh, it's so wonderful. <coughs> You got this kind of sinner in your church. You got this kind of sinner in your choir. And you got this kind of sinner on your staff. Because we accept and affirm them. We're not their judge. Okay? I'm not their judge. But I am to preach the word of the judge. Yeah. And his word says. So I, now I'm not the judge. He's already declared. And I'm just repeating what the judge has already said. The word is the judge. And the word says this. Or the word says that. But we got people with no backbone standing in the pulpit today who go out and they go, I'm not the judge. God loves you. Yeah, and he said if you don't repent, you're going to hell. What did Jesus say? He said there will be people who are cast in outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus didn't side skirt hell. He didn't act like it didn't exist. He didn't let people continue in their life. Oh, but the woman who came to him was caught in adultery in the very act. He just loved on it. Yeah, he did. He said, I don't condemn you, but <laughs> what else did he tell her? Go and do what? Oh, he, he said, go ahead and go back and find your lover and keep on. It's okay because I accept and affirm you. He said, go and sin no more. What's he saying? Now, here, you got to understand the love of God. The love of God extended mercy to her in an hour of desperation and said, I don't condemn you. But the love of God also told her what you were doing was wrong and stop doing it. Yeah. Amen. He did not accept and affirm her sin. Amen. He told her, I'm not going to condemn you, but stop sinning. Amen. Stop doing it. Amen. That's the love of God in manifestation. How do we get there? How do we get to the place? This is the message we should be preaching to people is repent from your lifestyle that violates God's law. And I'm, I'm talking about murdering folk, raping people, robbing banks. What, what's the scripture say? Let him steal, 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 steal no more. Adulterers, fornicators, homosexual, lesbians, whatever else you can come up with. <clears throat> I mean thieves. Hello? Gluttons. Yeah, we got solid in this church now. You know what gluttony is. It's not just, you know, having one meal you ate too much one time. You just live life of picking out. My God, you're at the all-you-can-eat buffet for every, every meal. 
and you do. Eat all you can eat. Until they were finally running out of the building. Drunkards, drug dealers, drug use, I mean, whatever it is. <coughs> You're to have a lifestyle change. If it violates God's law. Now, let me say this. I didn't get quite get to this. The first commandment, remember, and when Jesus, the, the guy said that, Jesus said, Thou well said, because on, on this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself, Jesus said, on this hinge all the law and the prophets. Now, let me say something. Everybody wants to talk about just loving people and not offending them. They never talk about the first part. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. If you love God, what, what does the Bible say? If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Amen. If you love God, you will keep his law. See, we, 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 we just we throw that one out. We think loving God, just, oh, I love you, Jesus. Yeah, if you love me, do what I told you to do. And do it the way I told you to do it. You ain't going to grow the church this way, Pastor Ed. Yes, we will. Because there's people. I'm telling you, there are people out there who want somebody to preach the truth. They don't, they don't, they don't, want, they don't want it watered down. They, want, they, they don't want somebody lying to them, making them feel good about the fact that they know they feel bad. I need somebody to stir up and say, look, what you're doing is wrong. Now stop doing it. And the good news is, the greater one in you will empower you to overcome that. Everybody gone home? Y'all still here? I just, I'm, I'm, we're living in a time where we can no longer play the game. There are too many souls in the balance between heaven and hell. And they're looking, and, and they say, big church got all this cool stuff going on. They must have something going right. It's called money, 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 money. You got a lot of money. Listen, a lot of people throw money into places place where it's, it looks like it's happening. Folks, it's not about what's happening. It's about what the truth is. And the truth is that the Word of God demands coming into the new. Now, let's, listen, we're talking about getting born again. When you get born again, there's things you're supposed to do. There's ways you're supposed to live. Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. We got all kinds of Christians looking for all kinds of ways to keep living where they used to live. And my question is, Why? The reason you came to Jesus was to get out of that mess. Are you here? When we preached earlier in the year, the very first couple weeks of January this year, Egypt just ain't all that. My God. And, and listen, the short-sightedness of men. 400 years they toiled in captivity and labor. Five days after they got out, they wanted to go back. Why would to God we died in this wilderness? It was better we had lived in Egypt. We, you know, at least we had food every day. 400 years you've been running your mouth about wanting to be free. And then you get free. And all you think about is going back to where you could just go, go get whipped and stomp mud to make bricks and get fed three times a day. That's how stupid the flesh can be. Are you here? You can't listen to your flesh. Pastors, you need to tell the people the truth. This isn't a switch and bait organization. The church is not a switch. You know, bait them. How many of you have ever seen truth in advertising? How many of you have ever gone to a restaurant, a piece of cheesecake sitting there? I mean, it looks like it's about seven inches tall. Got enough, they got a whole can of cherry pie filling on top. The juice is just running down the sides, all into the plate. I mean, they had to bring out a mop bucket to mop around your chair because you looked at that thing, you started salivating all over the place. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, soak the graham crackers cracker just soaked in cherry juice. I want one of them. They come walking out. It looks like you're feeding a Smurf. It's about a fourth the size. There might be a, a cherry and a half. With a little bit of that cherry, you know, stock juice that they have in there, like that syrupy corn syrup. Ooh, my, 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 my. 
And you're like, you put it up by the picture, and you're going, that ain't what I ordered. I ordered that. <laughs> well, that's just a picture. And then they, they, there's a law called the Truth in Advertising Act. Right. You can't advertise one thing and deliver another. Right. We've got a lot of churches that think they're going to switch and bait. Anybody ever had switch and bait happen to you? I did one time. I tried to order a camera. And it was going to come with the Canon lens. It was going to come with the Canon body with the Canon lens with the, you know, and the Canon zoom lens. Then I get a phone call after the order's all been processed. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're out of stock on the Canon lens. But we have this lens that we can sell you uh, for the, you know, if it's the same price, but it's just as good. The option, and I said, no, you just switched and baited me. I wanted the Canon lens. I didn't want your off-the-wall brand. You knew you didn't have it when you put it on the website. You're just, you're just getting people to call in because of a good price. They're going to get a good deal because they got a good price and get this thing. And then you're going to switch it out and really give them junk instead of the, what you want. It'll be the Canon body, but it's going to be the, you know, Ikamamba Kodusa lens. Can't even pronounce the thing. You can't even look it up on the Internet to find anything about it because you can't spell it. Hello? Credit my credit card back. I do not want your junk. And I don't deal with people who switch and bait. We got people thinking they're going to get people into the churches, and after a season, they're going to get saved. Right. No, what you're doing is you're letting them settle in. Maybe somebody does get saved. Thank God they do. But you're letting them settle in to be affirmed in their lifestyle. One time we had somebody in the church we thought was living a certain way, weren't sure. Somebody came to me and said, they're living in da-da-da-da. I know for a fact. Okay. So I got up one Sunday, not, you know, and just said, start preaching, telling them what the Bible says, read the scriptures, never came back. They wanted to keep living the way they were living. We're more interested in living the way they were living than repenting and serving God. Just one sermon. The Bible says this about this kind of lifestyle. Phew. Ain't never going back there. They don't, they don't preach love. Oh, yes, we do. I don't want you to go to hell. I, I, you know, and that guy who'll tell you anything you want to hear get, so you can, he can get your money and get you to be a number in his congregation and you can, you know, give him his, his need for success, fulfillment, he doesn't love you. He doesn't love you. How many, how many do this as a kid? You'd have parents who would tell, let the kids do anything they wanted to do over their house because they were cool. Your parents were old-fashioned. Right. He didn't love you. He just wanted to, they wanted to feel like they were the cool guy. Right. Go back to your mom and dad, they're mean. You know, I, don't understand some, I don't understand some parents. They won't let their kids drink and do drugs in the house. But I'm cool. Hey, you're an idiot. And if I catch you telling my kids that, I'll hit you. Pastor, aren't you a pastor? Yeah, but I'm a daddy first. Mess with my kids. I know this vengeance is the Lord's. He said he'll take care of it. But I, I help him out. I help him out. <laughs> I knew one guy, somebody was hitting up on his wife a number of years ago. I mean, hitting up on a really, I mean, in the church. And he finally went to the Lord in prayer and said, Lord, I got this one. Don't, don't you bother. I got it. <laughs> He's going to take care of it. Hallelujah. Oh, my. The new birth is about a change where you come to a place you're submitted to Jesus Christ. Submission to Jesus Christ means this. He's Lord. And the way he said it is the way it's got to be. And if you don't line up with that, you've got to change. Because he's Lord. If your boss comes to you, let's say, um, let's say, uh, Janice enters data a certain way at work. However, it's, it, she does it, she likes doing it. But the boss comes and says, listen, I don't like the way this is being done. I want it done this way. And she's got a choice. Quit or change. She don't have, she don't have the option to keep doing what she's doing. Because the, the Lord of the company said, this is the way it's got to be done from now on. And there are things that God's word says that people, there are people who come and they don't like it. They don't like being told they can't live the way they've been living. If you're going to live under his lordship, you're going to have to do it his way. 
That, the repentance part comes. You change from doing it the way that you've always done it. You have a change of mind. You have a change of attitude. You have a change of purpose. Your purpose is what? To please him. And if he wants it done a certain way, that's how you do it. You got people looking for outs all the time, how to get out of what God's already told them to do. I don't believe in church. Really, the Bible says to forsake not the assembling yourselves together as the manner of some. I don't believe in pastors. Well, God gave pastors for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. I don't believe in obedience. The Bible says obey them with the rule over you, for the, so they can give an account of your soul with joy. I don't believe in giving. Well, Jesus said give it and shall be given unto you. Hello? I don't believe in submitting. Submit yourselves one to another as unto the Lord. Amen. Are you here? There's all kinds of scriptures that go, you know. So what happens? When the, when the master says something, you do it his way. And, and listen, the moral code of God is still the moral code of God. I, I, read, I read recently this week, because a lot of stuff's been going on, obviously, in the church. And there's this guy, he's written a book, gay, How to Be Gay and a Christian. Well, it is an oxymoron. You can't be. But then he goes on and talks about, well, Paul did speak negatively about uh, homosexuality, but he did not speak about homosexual marriage. <laughs> of two people who are in a loving, committed relationship. And there's a, he's, he's supposed to be a Christian, gay Christian. He's written a book. And look, this is just fuel to the hands of people so they can go and argue their case against people who say. And, and they've taken the, taken the Greek word and say they really meant the Greek word for homosexual really meant, you know, male cult prostitute. Now, now I can tell you where they got that from probably, but I, I'm not going to say it. But let me tell you this. You look up the word. Paul is the only one that's ever used the word in the Bible twice. Was it used in the Septuagint? Was it used in classical Greek? Paul put the word together, and it comes from two words that mean uh, male and the bed, to sleep in the bed with a male, with another man, to sleep in the bed with another man. That's what the two Greek words mean. They come up with some kind of mess because somebody is looking for ways to undermine the word of God. So they're saying only male cult prostitutes are forbidden. Homosexual behavior is okay. This is what's going on. This radical advance, and listen, folks, if you think this is not deliberate, this radical advance is to silence the church. The thing that happened in Houston two weeks ago was sent to silence the church. With a mayor, because she's an open lesbian, her, her lover is the first lady of the city. Houston, Texas, sent a subpoena to five pastors saying, turn over all your sermons where you preached about homosexuality, where you said anything about the mayor, where anything, under threat of jail or fines if they didn't. They got some serious heat. The attorney general of the state of Texas came down and said, basically, you're, in, you're, you're running over the Constitution. So she took out the word sermons, but any speeches they made, any interpersonal contact within their church they made with church members about it. I know it's still, it's, still, it's still not right. They don't have the, she only has the authority. What? Simply trying to silence the church. And then you have one well-known pastor in Houston pray over her inauguration saying, God raised her up. We know, Lord, you raised her up. I'm not going to call his name, but he said it. I read the, I read the transcript of the prayer. I'm gonna when, do, when do we stop messing with the world's mess and become the standard of truth and righteousness in love we love people we don't want the homosexual to go to hell we don't want the lesbian to go to hell i don't want the murderer to go to hell i don't want the thief to go to hell i don't want the adulterer to go to hell so how do we do that we go preach the gospel we go tell the truth repent and be baptized in the name of the lord jesus turn from that way of living and follow the lord's demands and the lord's commands None of this Mickey Mouse mess anymore. Do you understand? When you come to give your heart to Jesus, you're coming to let him be the Lord of your life. And it is his way or the highway. And it really is. See, we've taken the message of love and humanized it. Made it human love. What's that based on? That's based on feelings. I love them. I should be allowed to marry them. It's a horse dog on it. 
did you really nay in my church service? <laughs> you think I'm joking. It wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. Some woman wanted to marry her dolphin or something. I forgot what it was. Some animal that she had. She, they wanted to marry it. It was in the news. So I'm not talking you know, really crazy, stupid stuff here. Marriage, here's our stand. Here's our stand. Marriage is between a man and a woman. I will never, I don't care who you show up here with, I don't care what you get outside of our church with, I will never marry people who are not qualified to be married, and that means if one is not a man and one is not a woman, you ain't getting married by me. And if, you, if I'm forced by handcuffs to get up behind a pulpit and officiate a sermon, what they're going to get is you will burn in hell for what you're about to do. That's what they're going to get. I'll mess it up. I'll quote Romans. You think, I'm not just messing. It's time we take a stand in all arenas. You must be born again. You've got to come to, you're full of hate. You're full of, see, as long as you say what they want to hear, you're full of love. When you say what the Bible says, you're a hate monger. No, those people are telling you what you want to hear are, are sending you to hell. The true people preaching love are the ones telling you how not to go to hell. But my feelings got hurt. Better your feelings be hurt today and your soul get saved than to go to hell forever. You must be born again. You must commit to the lordship of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. You must obey him and be in obedience to what he says, how he says it, and what he says. And the law of love does not supersede, the law of love one toward another does not supersede the law of our love to God and keeping his commandments. Well, his only commandment is to love one another. You just misread your Bible. I said, you misread your Bible. Jesus said the law of love, all the law and the prophets hinge on the law of love. Didn't say they were done away with. They hinged on the law of love. Amen. Stand up. Hallelujah. I didn't mean to really go this way, but it's good to get things out sometime. People need to know where you stand. That's where I stand. Everybody's going to look. Listen, you know, uh, well, it's, this is public knowledge. Carlton Pearson went, Pearson went down that road. He went to a meeting of, quote, homosexual Christians, and they washed his feet. And he came back saying he had more love shown to him by the homosexual church than he did by the church. And within two years, his 5,000-member church had gone from 5,000 to nothing. Got on television and said, There's a, and I know that things I'm preaching, are, are, you, you, you can't find and support for what I'm preaching in, 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 in that book, the Bible, but I know I'm right. There's spiritual forces at work right now. And we have to be, you know, listen, he lost a 5,000 member church because he let that spirit get a hold of him. And he came out, after that he started preaching, everybody's going to get saved. God loves everybody. He started preaching universalism. God loves everybody. And different men went to him, including Brother Roberts. Tried to straighten them out. He wouldn't receive it. Because he he let that spirit that's in the world get into him. He's going to say he's in danger of losing his own soul. That's why we can't play. We can't mess around. Be cute with this stuff. The sinner is a sinner. He must repent and live God's way. Now, the wonderful thing is God empowers you to live his way when you accept him. When you submit to his will, he empowers you to live that way. You can live free and above sin. Amen. So we're not angry. I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm ticked off at pastors. I am angry with pastors who are preaching lies and building their churches on a lie and, and, and putting people in danger of spending eternity in hell because they won't tell them the truth. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if, if, if you don't repent, the Lord said he'll come put your candle out. Go read the seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. I'll come quickly and I'll put your candle out. 5,000 to nothing in two years, that's, that's pretty 
stinking quick, don't you think? I know another church got some sexual sin in it. They were, they were running you know, several thousand, and they went down to just a few hundred. Pastor, how they finally turn over to somebody else and leave and go somewhere else. Church never recovered. Had to sell the building. Millions of dollars that building was worth. Had to sell it because the church just went. Pfft. Cannot afford to let the spirit of the world rule in our minds and in our hearts. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.